Hello, I'm Korma. Welcome to the Gourmet Vegetarian Cooking Video Encyclopedia. Rice is one of the most basic ingredients in the Indian vegetarian cuisine, and it also is one of the most versatile. It can be used in limitless ways, cooked with spices, seasonings, nuts, raisins, curd, beans, yogurt or vegetables. It provides visual appeal, fiber and nutrition. Rice also complements the protein in other foods. When you eat rice together with such foods as dal, nuts or dairy produce, the total food value increases by up to 45%. So this edition, we're going to show you how to prepare all these tasty rice dishes from the Indian vegetarian cuisine, such as rice pilaf with nuts and peas, tasty lemon rice, South Indian yogurt rice, and kichari or mung bean and rice stew. So, let's begin. Rice and green pea pilaf. Here's a classic, simple to prepare, fluffy rice dish using basmati rice, green peas, slivered almonds, and a selection of sweet spices, cloves, cardamom, and cinnamon. And this is basmati rice. Basmati rice is a long grain, aromatic rice grown in the highlands of Pakistan. You can buy it in the shops here, and it costs a little more than the normal rice that you would purchase, but it's well worth it. It's also an aromatic rice, mm, even when it's not cooked. And when it is cooked, uh, there's a beautiful uh, fragrance which comes out of the pot uh, when the rice is completed. So another advantage of basmati rice is that when you cook it, uh, you have less chance of the rice going gluggy or sticking together than using any other sort of rice because it's a very fine quality rice. So one thing you have to remember before you prepare any rice dishes you have to wash the rice very thoroughly. There's always rice flour and grit and dirt which is mixed in with the rice so that has to be washed out thoroughly first. Let me show you how that's done. Place your rice in a colander and lower that colander into a bowl of water, like so. Now, rub the rice like this between your palms to get out all that grit. And you'll notice that the water goes cloudy. Now, repeat that process a few times. First of all, drain the water out of the colander. Empty the water, fill it up again, and repeat. Do this about two or three times until the water is no longer cloudy. So for our rice pilaf with green peas and almonds, you need the following ingredients. One cup of basmati rice. Now this has been washed and it's been allowed to dry. Whenever you saute your rice, it has to be washed ahead of time so that you have enough time for it to dry. We also have one cup of green peas. We have three tablespoons of ghee and one third of a cup of slivered almonds. We're going to take one piece of cinnamon stick. This is cinnamon in its raw state one and a half inches long. We're going to take about six cloves. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to take some cardamom pods. Let's say about four. Cardamom is very, very aromatic sweet spice. Let's put it in our mortar and pestle here. And smashing up the cardamom a little. So let's take one pot, place in our ghee in a heavy pan, toss in your cinnamon stick, your cardamom pods, and your cloves. Saute them for a little while, and toss in your slivered almonds. Now let's stir these up until the almonds become a little golden brown.
So now we're sautéing our rice. Now you might ask, why are you sautéing your rice? The reason is, when you sauté rice in oil or butter or ghee, each individual grain becomes coated so that when that rice is boiled in water, it stays separate. So at the end, you have a beautiful fluffy rice. Now, when you sauté your rice, you'll notice it goes through different stages. First of all, it becomes opaque. Now, as you go on, the rice becomes milky or whitish in color. That's the stage we have to get to just before we add our liquid. So while I've been sautéing my rice, I've also been boiling my water. You see over here I have a pot with two cups of water in it. For every one cup of rice, you require two cups of water. This is the formula. And I suggest your water should be boiling. This guarantees the best rice. So when your water comes to the boil and your rice is milky colored, you add one teaspoon of salt, your peas, and finally your boiling water. Now up to this point, you've been stirring your rice. Continue to stir it, placing your rice and water on a full flame until it comes to the boil. Now as soon as the rice comes to the boil, turn it down to a simmer, place a lid on top and don't stir it anymore. From this point on, don't touch the rice, don't take off the lid. Now, have a look at your watch, check the time. You can come back in 15 minutes and turn off the flame. And then 20 minutes, you can lift up the lid and it should be done. Perfectly fluffy, soft, hot and ready to go. So we'll come back in 15 minutes. So it's been five minutes now since we turned off the rice. It's been steaming to completion. Let's have a look at it. Steaming hot, fluffy rice. Now notice here how all the individual grains of rice are completely separate and fluffy. Basmati rice pilaf with green peas. So I'm going to show you now how to make lemon rice. Lemon rice is a beautiful dish containing the piquancy of fresh lemon juice, toasted cashew nuts, and garnished with fresh parsley and coconut. Let me show you the ingredients here. We're going to use one cup of washed, dried basmati rice, a teaspoon of salt, a third of a teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon of black mustard seeds, half a teaspoon of split black urdal, two tablespoons of ghee, and a half of cup of cashews. We've also got two cups of water. Now we're going to garnish all that with half a cup of freshly grated coconut, one third of a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice, and two tablespoons of fresh parsley. So the first thing we're going to do is put on our water. I like to put the water on first while I'm roasting the rice. Two cups of water. And into that water, we're going to put salt and our turmeric, like so. Put a lid on there. And in our other pot, we're going to toast up our rice. Now we're following this, exactly the same procedure here for roasting and cooking as we did for the rice with green peas. In other words, we're going to toast the rice till the grains become, first of all, translucent and then a milky colour. 
So the rice is practically ready here. It's gone past the translucent stage. It's just approaching the whitish stage. Our water's boiling. Let's add it to the rice. Give it one more stir. Make sure all the grains of rice are submerged. Sometimes a few of them stick on the inside of the pan. Push them all under the water. Give it one last stir and then put on the lid. Turn it down to a simmer. And we'll come back in about 15 minutes to turn it off. Let it steam an extra five minutes and then we're ready to proceed on with our next step. So I've got a pot of rice that I've made previously. It's already cooked, ready to go. So I'm going to proceed on with our procedure here. Take a heavy pan place it on the flame, place in some ghee, and we're going to toast up our mustard seeds and our urad dal. The mustard seeds give it that wonderful nutty flavour, and also the urad dal, the urad dal lentils, they also give it that beautiful uh, spicy aroma, which goes so well with the, with the lemon juice. So let's put in our mustard seeds. Cook them up till they, till they crackle. Add our ur dal. Toast it up till the ur dal is golden brown. And then we're going to empty the contents of this into our pot of cooked rice. Here's our pot of cooked lemon rice. Make sure you scrape every individual little herd dal and mustard seed out of there, like so. Now, let's pour in our lemon juice. and gently fold it all in with a fork along with our cashew nuts. I always use a fork to do this otherwise you'll mush up the rice. And when it's all folded in, we're going to place it on our decorative tray and garnish it. Garnish of coconut, parsley, and a twist of lemon. Lemon rice with cashews. Cauliflower, green pea, and mung bean stew, or kitchari, as it's commonly called in India, has also been called the poor man's feast. Poor man's because these are very simple ingredients, and feast because it's a delicious dish full of varieties of flavors. It consists primarily of mung beans and rice. These are split mung beans, and these are whole mung beans. The whole mung beans are often sprouted into bean sprouts and they're available in all Chinese stores. They can be used for these dal and rice recipes like kitri. I prefer to use a split mung. It's lighter on the system and easier to digest. So for this kitri recipe today, we've got two thirds of a cup of washed split mung beans. We've got one cup of basmati rice. We're going to use five tablespoons of ghee, half a cup of minced fresh coriander, quarter of a cup of cashew nuts, one tablespoon of cumin seeds, half a tablespoon of ginger, we've got one tablespoon of minced chilies, a quarter of a teaspoon of asafoetida, one and a quarter teaspoons of turmeric, one tablespoon of butter, and in the vegetable department, 
You can vary this recipe, any sort of vegetables will do, but I'm going to use two tomatoes which have been cut up into pieces to form two-thirds of a cup of minced tomatoes, two-thirds of a cup of fresh green peas, and one small cauliflower which is diced. And also, I'm going to add four cups of hot water. So let's begin. Take one heavy pot, <coughs> place it on full flame, place your ghee inside, like so, and fry up your ginger and your cumin and your chilies and your asphatida. This forms the aromatic flavours that are going to be impregnated into the rice and dal for this beautifully textured dish. Kitri is a high protein rice and dal dish which in India is often taken for breakfast with a little bowl of yogurt and a little squeeze of lemon on the side. Delicious. Now add the turmeric. Fly that around for a second or two. And let's toss in the cauliflowers. And let's stir fry these for about a minute or two. These are quite small florets of cauliflower, so we're just going to fry them for one minute. Now we're going to add the dal and the rice. These split mung beans and the rice has been washed and dried beforehand. There's the dal, and here's the rice. So let's saute the rice and beans with the vegetables, ghee and spices together for about two minutes. Now add the peas and the water. As you can see, I've had the water boiling here on the stove makes it easier for this preparation to, to move along nicely so it keeps boiling. So there's our kitchen in its raw state. So now stir everything in. You'll notice at this point in time it's very wet but it will thicken as time goes by. Turn the flame down to a simmer and you can come back every now and again and stir it unlike rice which you can't touch when it cooks. Uh, you can Stir it every few minutes and you'll notice that the beans and the rice will break down and form a beautifully textured stew. So normally speaking at this stage, you just place a lid on it and come back every now and again. Now I do have over here a pot of kitchri which I've just completed cooking and I'll show you what it looks like. And here's the finished kitchri. It's very juicy, succulent, and the mung beans are all soft and the rice is soft, but they haven't completely broken up. Some people like their kitri soft and wet, some people like it soft and dry. I would call this a dry kitri. Now, just to finish it off nicely, I'm going to add our final ingredients, which are uh, salt and butter. Allow the butter to melt in there to form a, a nice glisten. We've got our diced tomatoes. cashew nuts and our fresh coriander. Fresh coriander is a must for this dish. Gently fold it all in. You can now turn off the flame and there it is. A beautiful poor man's feast kitchery. All you need is a bowl of yogurt, a few slices of lemon and you've got yourself a beautiful meal. Cauliflower, mung beans and rice stew kitchery. Yogurt rice, or as it's known, 
Dahi Bhat is one of the most famous South Indian rice dishes. As the name suggests, it's mixed with yogurt and also fresh ginger and chilies. It's a wonderfully cooling dish, even on the hottest of days, and it gets pretty hot in South India. Let me show you some of the ingredients. We've got one and a half cups of basmati rice, which has been washed and drained. We're going to use three cups of water with that. We've got one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of split urad dal lentils, one teaspoon of minced ginger, one teaspoon of minced fresh green chilies. That's about two chilies, small ones. We've got a tablespoon of ghee, one teaspoon of black mustard seeds, and one and a half cups of fresh plain yogurt. So the first thing to do is to put a flame underneath our water and get that boiling. And while we're doing that, we're going to melt our ghee in our pan here. And let's add our mustard seeds. Now let's add our fresh ginger, our chilies, and our urad dal. This is a really traditional South Indian combination. Now let's add our rice. And saute that with those spices. So we're going to cook our rice the way we normally do in this saute method. In other words, the rice has now become whitish. Let's not forget to add our salt. And now let's add our boiling water. Let's give it a good stir. Get it centered. Bring it to the boil. Turn it down to a simmer, put on the lid, and we'll come back in about 15 minutes. So it's been about 15 minutes now. Let's check our rice. If you're not sure whether the rice is done, take one grain and squeeze it between your thumb and forefinger. And if there's nothing left in there, no little hard center, then it's done. So this rice is just done. Let's add our yogurt. Like so. Let's put our spoon down and get our fork for this. We have to gently fold it in with a fork. Now you notice I've still got the flame on here because I'm going to cook it for another few minutes just to finish it off. This stage you have to be very careful just to very gently fold it all in. Stir the yogurt in with your fork until all of the yogurt is mixed through. Replace the lid and we're going to come back in five minutes. Well, it's been five minutes now. We'll turn off the flame here. And there it is. Hot yogurt rice. Let's spoon it onto our decorative tray here. Wonderful served with dosa pancakes, idlis, and other traditional South Indian dishes. South Indian dahi bhat, yogurt rice. So here it is, just some of the countless rice dishes you can prepare in the Indian vegetarian cuisine.
Happy eating.